Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to paint this ocean wave in acrylics. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today I am working on a Fredericks Convexo canvas. This is a canvas with a beveled edge, so you're going to hang it without a frame. They look so pretty on the wall. I have a whole wall full of paintings done on these. Just for transparency, I am sponsored by Fredericks. They do provide me with the canvases that I use, although they are the only canvases that I would have used anyway, so it works out really well. All of the supplies that I used for this painting are listed below in the video description. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, complete with voiceover and some real time clips, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my weekly one to two hour long tutorials, and access to all of my past tutorials that are over there on Patreon. There are over a hundred. That's a lot of videos for four bucks. Now let's move on to this demonstration. You can see I've got some light lines there where I drew my wave out. I use, did that with a water-soluble graphite pencil. That way I don't have any actual graphite pencil lines showing through my paint. So I'm starting by painting just the base background color of that teal color. I'm going to go ahead and get some green in there. I'm using a mop brush to fan that out to get rid of some of my brush strokes. Now I'm okay with some brush strokes showing. I just want to get rid of some of them so it's not too heavy. I'm going to move down to the bottom section and get a base layer in here. I'm not worried about everything being perfect right now. That doesn't matter. I don't even need the colors to be perfect. All of this is going to get covered later on. I just need a base of paint so I'm not fighting the white of the canvas anymore blocking in some of this lighter green, the yellowy green, where it's going, the wave is lifting out of the water. This is starting to look like a really bad landscape with maybe a little stream coming through the front. <laughs> but what I'm looking at when I look at a wave photo is some, look at the color that's underneath the veins and the sea foam. I don't want to look at the sea foam, paint that first and then paint in between. That would take way too long. Look how I'm just getting a base layer covering the canvas with the, the color that is underneath the sea foam. That's what you want to look for. What's under the sea foam, that comes later. And it's easy to look at something like this and want to start with the sea foam. That seems like the fun part. That goes last. You have to wait for that. Start with these base layers first. You've got to have this color that is going to go under the veins and under the sea foam. Now I'm glazing with Liquitex glazing medium so that I get a lot of transparency in this paint. Most of the paint that I'm using here are Liquitex basics. I've got a few Liquitex heavy bodies that I'm using just because I like the teal color of those. But mo for all of this, I'm not using water like I typically use for glazing. I'm using a lot of the Liquitex glazing medium to create more of a translucent color and it allows the light to refract through better so when you look at this painting in person it doesn't really capture on video or in photo but when you look at it in person the way that the light refracts through all of these layers I end up getting a lot of depth you feel like you're really looking through layers of water getting this nice muddy color for this area here and again this looks ug really ugly at this stage but I need to get these base layers down first so I have something to build on when I start adding the sea foam. I want to try to get these a little bit darker and I'll just keep building up. Starting to pull more of the greens. Now I need to get this shadow in here really dark at the base of this wave. So it fades from my darkest point, the deep shadows on the bottom, and then up to the lightest part of the wave is going to be up at the top. I'm using a Teclon Bristled Filbert to paint this. For most of what I've done so far, I'm doing this with a Teclon Bristled Filbert. For this one, I added two layers of gesso, let it dry completely, and then sanded it down with three and 400 grit sandpaper. The reason for that is really obvious here. If I want to get this to go on smoothly and don't want to have little bumps of the canvas showing through, with this canvas, this one is it has a little bit more tooth than what I typically like on these convexo canvases. They're a nice heavyweight canvas. But in this case, I can easily make it so that it's got a finer tooth for this piece by just putting uh, those two layers of gesso. I used Liquitex gesso. And then and let it dry and sanded it down. And now I've got this really nice surface so the paint is just gliding across this canvas. That and then because I have so many layers done with the Liquitex glazing medium that makes it, it feels almost slippery. So the paint just glides nice and smooth. 
really easy to get this very smooth finish you between having sanded and gessoed this canvas and then now with that with so many layers on it at this point with the glazing medium and paint and I'm just going to keep glazing. And what a glaze is, if you're not familiar, I'm basically just tinting the color. They're all translucent layers. None of these layers that I'm doing here are completely opaque. You can still see what's underneath just a bit. And this is what's going to build so much depth in this piece for me. More glazing, and I am letting it dry completely. That's a very big deal. When you're glazing, make sure the previous layer is completely dry. If it's not, it'll lift. When you add your next layer, it will lift off the canvas, and you end up with almost this little hole shape uh, where the paint was from the first layer or the previous layer. So make sure you are letting it dry completely before you put your next glaze over it. And I do have a video that goes a little bit more into glazing. I'll have a card pop up so you can check that out. I'm thinning that paint down with the glazing medium so that it is more translucent and it flows nice and smooth. Going to add another glaze up to the section where my light is causing a really bad shine mark. That's super helpful for you guys. But basically, it's the same thing. I'm just repeating the same process with teals and greens and phalo blue. All of the colors that I'm using here are very warm. I'm not using like ultramarine blue or anything like that. I want to keep these colors very warm. Adding another glaze. I probably have 10 layers of glazes on this to get it where I wanted it to be before I even started with the sea foam. And the nice thing about painting waves like this, if I don't have things perfectly smooth, if you are struggling with acrylics, you, ha you have a really hard time blending things and getting it smooth, this is a good project for you because it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. Once I go over it with the sea foam, that's going to hide if I've got any heavy lines or brush strokes that I don't want. Plus, those lines just add to that look of waves. So as long as you're moving the brush in the same direction that the waves would be going anyway, if you have any unwanted lines, they can actually work for you for that end result. Using a bit of transparent mixing white in with some of these colors so that it's not too opaque. If I use titanium white, it's very, very opaque. It's going to cover too much of what's underneath. By using the transparent mixing white, and that's in the Liquitex Heavy Body, I'm able to get a, I can lighten up the color without completely covering what's underneath those previous layers. Okay, so now I get to start with the sea foam. I've switched to a flat brush and I'm working side to side. I'm keeping my hand kind of sketchy and just adding in my white. This is titanium white. It looks like I'm using just straight white. I'm not. I do have some of my teal mixed into it, which really isn't a big deal. You can simplify this and just use titanium white at this point and just glaze your colors of teal on top of it later on. But for right now, I just need to get this base. I want to start creating these shapes. I want to keep most of these shapes going through horizontally. I'm keeping that side to side. If you do too many lines that are more vertical or diagonal, you ruin the perspective. So when you're painting and drawing water, in this case where the water's flattened out, I want to keep these lines side going horizontal. When I move onto the wave where the wave is lifting out of the water, where it's raising up and curling over, that's where I'll get those more vertical and diagonal lines. But here, the majority of what I'm doing I'm keeping everything kind of sketchy, moving my hand back and forth as I paint these in and keeping it horizontal. These don't have to be perfect for these first layers. I, if I'm a little, I don't have it quite filled in solid enough, anything like that, doesn't really matter. I'm going to add several layers until I get this to look how I want. And while I am using a reference photo, this one came from Graphic Stock, I am using a reference photo, but I'm not copying it exactly. It doesn't need to be exact. What I'm, I'm doing when I look at the reference photo, anytime I paint or draw waves, is trying to get the feel of the water, the movement of the water. So I want to make sure that my lines are going in the right direction, basically. I'm creating something similar, but it does not have to be exact to capture that look. Same thing as what you often see me say, or you hear me say, with painting or drawing hair or fur. I'm... Every strand doesn't have to be exact. I just need to capture the movement, have each clump of fur, each strand of hair going in the right direction. And that's really very similar to what I'm doing here. 
And it's very helpful if you can look at what you're painting as abstract shapes. If you look at this and you, you have in your head, I'm painting a wave, that can get a bit overwhelming because when you're up close to this, none of this looks like water to me at this point. I just have to copy those abstract shapes or kind of a feel for the direction that the water is moving in those abstract shapes from my reference photo. But if you're looking at it as water, one of the things that I see people have a tendency to do when they first start painting waves in water, they'll do these little, kind of like what we did with kids, these waves where it's like comes up to a peak, swoops back, back down and like a U, comes back to a peak, swoops down and into a U. Don't create that form. That doesn't look natural. It doesn't look realistic. It will give you a very cartoony looking wave. Here, you can see how I'm keeping everything mostly side to side. It's sketchy, but it stays more side to side. Now, once I got the white on there, I'm glazing my teal color right over it because I don't want the seafoam to be solid white. There's very little actual white in this piece. The majority of this, it looks white in comparison to the color next to it, but it's not straight white. So let's see how I toned all of that down with the teal. I'm gonna glaze over that and tone it down even more. Oops, too much. Wiped a little bit of that off with the paper towel. Got a little carried away there. Now here's a huge tip for you. If you're working on an easel like I am upright with a round canvas, I took a piece of 3M Velcro strips and I'll have a link to the, one, the type that I used in the video description, but I took one of those and just attached it to the back of the canvas and then to my easel. So I'm able to move it, it's just Velcro. I can remove the canvas as needed if I need to adjust it, but it kept it from rolling around constantly. That's always been a frustration when working with round canvases, they keep rolling away. This was really, really helpful. I just used a small, small piece, cut a little area or a little section off and it kept my canvas from rolling away. It made everything so much easier. Part of me felt really smart for thinking of doing that and part of me felt really stupid for not having thought of it earlier. But you can see the canvas is no longer rolling away from me. That really was very helpful and I will be doing that from now on every time I work on round canvases, which are one of my favorite types of canvases to work on. So it, that will be a very helpful thing. So see, I'm coming back on top of the areas that I use the teal color. I'm adding these sketchy white. I'm using titanium white now and adding the highlights on top of this. I do have a little bit of teal mixed in with this titanium white because I don't want it to be too bright. But all of these layers, look how it now starts to look like water. It comes together in the end. I'm taking unbleached titanium white here and I'm starting to block in the shape of my wave. I'll come back through and add more details later. Just getting the general idea of where the sea foam is going to go. I'm still using that same flat brush that I used on the upper section. Now for the wave where it's crashing over here, I wanna leave some streaks and I wanna make sure that they're rounded to create that look of rounded water, the, the streaks pushing forward. I'm using a stiff round brush here and just dabbing in where that sea foam is going to go. I'm going to have to glaze shadows over that later, but this gives me a nice base. I ended up changing the way that I've got the sea foam here. So you'll see me work on it a bit, but if you look at the end painting, I went through and changed that section on the left into more veins instead of the bigger fluffy sea foam. I just thought it looked better for this one. Now here, you can see I've got those more diagonal lines. As I move down underneath where the water flattens back out, look how I move the lines or switch so that my veins, all of the, the little sea foam bits and then the veins in the water, look how they flatten out so that they're more horizontal again. This is what's giving me that perspective of flat water and then up into the wave, it raises up and then the water behind it is flat again. This is how I'm keeping that perspective accurate. Just really watch which direction you've got your sea foam and your veins going because those have so much to do do with what actual perspective you end up with. Again, side to side, I've got a few that come down di more diagonally, but most of these stay very horizontal. Now, because of the camera angle, this does look like I'm, I'm drooping completely to one side. It's not. If you look at the finished piece, that flattens back out. Just sketching those in there. And this is not straight white. This is white mixed with my teal colors. I don't want to go too bright at this point. Switching over to a liner brush. This is, I believe it's number one or a number two, synthetic hog-haired liner brush. Adding some of the veins here. 
I'm not jumping again, not jumping straight to white. I'm keeping these a little bit more muted. I'll add white highlights on top, but I've got more control. If I start with these darker colors first, it's going to look better. Now, if I go too white, it's not a big deal. I can glaze just like, like I did on the upper section. I can glaze colors over that as needed. Working on the sea foam again that I'm going to end up painting over. I felt like it, for this painting, it was just taking away from the crashing wave portion. So that's what, one of the big reasons that I ended up taking that out. But I redid this in colored pencil. That one's already over on Patreon, the two-hour version of the colored pencil version of this wave. That one, I actually did leave more sea foam there. But for the painting, I just wasn't liking how it came out. And this is one of, if you take nothing else from my videos, don't. the biggest thing I can teach you is do not be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes don't matter. You just paint over them. It doesn't hurt anything. Nothing goes wrong. See there? I just covered it up, painted over it, and now I'm going to put veins over and the best part is you can still see some of the sea foam through that underneath great it just adds more depth accidentally but it adds more depth to the piece so don't be afraid of making mistakes mistakes are no big deal one you want to learn how to fix mistakes anyway in case you're working on a commission or something that's a big deal you need to know how to fix mistakes when they happen because they do happen or you may just like I did here change your mind you didn't like how one looked. you wanted to try something else you need to know how to fix those but don't have a little meltdown every time you have a mistake happen don't sit there kicking yourself it's not a big deal you can fix anything you just need to learn how to fix those things but don't let mistakes terrify you into not painting like I just did here I mean that was a pretty big area I just covered it and repainted it, it didn't ruin the piece it didn't mess anything up I'm still moving that liner brush side to side as I'm down at the the flat section of the water again And switched over to another flat brush. And see, even when I come down at a diagonal, notice how my streaks, my brush strokes, are still horizontal. They still stay very flat. You don't just want a straight vertical line coming down. Though you'll have a few of them in waves, just not too many. Really focus on keeping everything side to side. Unless you're back up to the wave where it's curving or the water is lifting up from the flat areas of the water. Using a lot of transparent mixing white for the sea foam here. So you can still see that kind of deep grayish burgundy color underneath. Whoops, that, there was a mistake. That was a big mistake. I had green on my brush, did not realize it. Just wiped it off. Not a big deal. Paint over it. And that's a great example of times that you're going to have mistakes that you, that wasn't an E, I mean, I don't want a big green blob there. I can't just leave it there. So I've got to wipe that off and cover it. It wasn't, it didn't ruin anything. My painting is fine. Don't, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Just learn how to fix them. Notice the shadows that I've got in the wave here. You don't just want white where the sea foam is. You want to really watch your reference photo. Watch where you've got shadows because that makes a big difference. It's very similar to painting trees and bushes where you'll have clumps and clusters of the sea foam falling down. And I've got different tones. I've got greens in there. I've got some of that kind of purpley tone. I've got some yellows in there. I've got a lot of different tones in the sea foam. It's not just flat white. If you paint it flat white, which I've seen happen a lot, actually it's how I used to paint it when I first started painting waves, it makes everything look very flat. Get those shadows. Some final white highlights on here. Now I'm starting to use a little bit more of the titanium white, really letting that stand out. And see all of those ugly first layers of the muddy areas, the teal areas, all of the, that, the mess of what was my base layer before I started with the sea foam. Now it makes sense. It was terribly ugly when I had painted it that way, getting that, that base under. But you have to do that first so that you have something for the sea foam to sit on top of. And now it has this very shiny feel to it. It looks like water. But I had to paint a very ugly base layer. And it's very easy to see that ugly base layer and think, uh, this looks terrible. I messed up. This is never going to look good. You have to work through it. Don't let those ugly base layers make you throw your paintings out. Just keep working on them until they look how you want them to. Unless it's an issue where your main drawing is completely wrong, you can fix anything. Here I'm taking a toothbrush with some titanium white paint that is thinned out with water and I'm just flicking some little sparkles onto the canvas. 
gives it a little bit more shine. And some more glazing using a Teflon bristled filbert brush here for these glazes. Adding some yellow. Look how it makes that wave just glow. That little bit of yellow. It's mostly water. Or, I'm sorry, mostly, I'm used to saying water. Mostly glazing medium mixed with a little bit of paint. So it just tints the color a little bit. I can still see the veins underneath. I can still see all of my brush strokes underneath. But it warms that up and it makes that portion of the wave really jump out at you. Since that's where I really want the focus to be is the wave, adding this warm color draws you into that area. A little bit more yellow in through here. Again, very translucent. I don't want to use no paint color. Let's say I had yellow, I wanted to lighten it up. I need to use transparent mixing white, not not titanium white because it's so opaque that it would cover up the paint that is underneath which I don't want to do I'm glazing I want to see the colors underneath so if I want to lighten that yellow up I want to use a tra transparent mixing white not straight titanium white there is my finished painting. Again, I've got the colored pencil version of this is over at Patreon right now. The one and a half, one hour, one and a half, I forget, hour long version of this tutorial, the slower time one complete with some real time clips is also over at Patreon right now. So make sure to head over and check that out. Hey, have you, hey, have you, I dropped my phone. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to paint an oat. Today I'm going to be, dem today I'm going to be, Hey, have you subscribed yet? If not, there's a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going to it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week.